that John lived in. Very exciting. Let's just bow in a minute of prayer. Loving Father, as we come to you now, we ask that you will speak to our hearts. Lord, that you will take from our thoughts those things that could interrupt you speaking to us. Father, we ask that you will reveal to your soul, to, to each one of us, more of your glory and bring honour and glory to your name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Christmas is upon us. I wonder what reaction that brings in your thoughts and minds. You see, it seems to me every Christmas there is more and more competition to influence our minds as to the reason for the season. And most of that influence is a negative influence. There also seems to be a growing resentment not only on behalf of the community, but on behalf of many Christians, a resentment to the rush and bustle and stress that is caused by the expectations. And there seems to be more of us blaming Christmas for that stress, whether it be because of the rush and bustle, or whether it be stress on the hip pocket. <clears throat> Some years ago, a well-known person complained in the media, they're even bringing religion into Christmas. <laughs> Where had that person been? All their life. Where had the church been? Or where has the church gone wrong when people start speaking like that? You see, the sad thing is that more people are questioning the relevance of, Christian to, uh, of Christmas to their daily lives than ever before. And sadly, even, even Christians become so hassled with the purchasing spree, the preparations, <coughs> and the big parties, and paying for the bill of the bills in January, that they give little thought to Jesus. And when we do think about it, it is why with a guilty conscience for overspending and overeating and overindulging. And yet we seem to sigh breath, a breath of relief when it's all over. For another year. But it's only next week that it's back again. But why is the birth of Jesus Christ so important to us today? An event 2,000 years ago. Is it relevant to our modern world and society? What effect can Jesus' birth have on me and my life here in the 21st century? Well, for those who will take notice, Jesus' birth is the reason for many things. And I want us to look at some of those today. First of all, it is the reason for celebration. That maidens will dance and be glad, young men and old as well, I will turn their mourning into gladness. I will give them comfort and joy instead of sorrow. I don't know that there'd be many of us that would have a problem with being persuaded to have a party or to go to a party because we like to celebrate. We like to celebrate all kinds of events and often make up excuses to have a party particularly if someone else will pay for it. <laughs> but the anniversary we call Christmas is the best reason of all to hold a party, the best reason of all to celebrate. But it, unfortunately it has been hijacked by commercialism. So much so that as Christians often, we dread the season instead of celebrating. 
You see, it is time that we should remember that God became a human being to live and walk on this earth and to go the full hog for each one of us. As we celebrate his birth, we should be aware that in becoming human, God was restricting Jesus to the frailties of human, uh, humankind. And that purpose was for our benefit. It was for your benefit. It was for my benefit that he was restricted in those areas. Because Jesus came so that people could once again be reconciled with the great creator, the God of all, all. Then we see that Jesus' birth is the reason for our hope and our trust. You see, we have forgotten how to trust others. And we have forgotten how to trust God. The true hope restores that trust. Too often we try to rely on earthly perceptions for our salvation instead of relying on God. The story is told of a young Salvation Army lady who was doing some personal evangelism. She came to a distinguished gentleman and she asked if he was saved. The man drew himself up and he said in his formidable voice, Young lady, I am a bishop. The young lady looked at him in the eye and very sweetly replied, Sir, there is hope for even the vilest. <laughs> <laughs> You see, we forget that. We look at people, they're out of clothing, and say, hey, he must be all right, or she must be all right. But God is looking at the heart. And there is hope for even the vilest heart. We read, the people who trust the Lord will become strong again. They will rise up as an eagle in the sky. They will run and not, rest, need, not need rest. They will walk and not become tired. How many people through the ages have said, life is pointless? You see, many are living in this world without hope and without God. But Jesus came to restore that hope to a lost world. A hope that promised a choice of life after death for all of eternity. A hope that was a gift from God that could not be bought with money. Just as well because most of us wouldn't have been able to afford to buy it. This gift, though, needs to be accepted by welcoming Jesus Christ into our lives personally, asking Christ to have come into our life and to control our life. Because we read, hope does not disappoint us because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit who he has given us. The love of God brings us this hope through the Holy Spirit when we bow before God. Then we see that Jesus served is the reason for our rest from the demands of life. Friends, as life becomes more demanding, we need rest to restore now get up and go. Even though it is almost gone, it can be restored. Jesus said, Come to me, all you who are tired and heavy loads. I will give you rest. 
accept my teachings and learn from me because I am gentle and humble in spirit and you will find rest for your lives. The teaching that I ask you to accept, he said, is easy. The load I give you to carry is light. Friends, it doesn't matter how busy we are. If we are in God's purpose, he will give us sufficient rest. Invigoration comes from the achievement of a job well done under God's guiding hand. The key is being sure that we are doing God's work, that we are doing what God wants us to do, what God wants me to do personally. That is the key to a close relationship with him. Being sure that I am in God's purposes for my life. Sometimes we see Christians who appear to have an immense program and we wonder how they cope. Well, the truly successful ones are listening to God and are being guided and upheld by Him day by day. They're not running ahead of Him. They're not waiting for Him to do other things in their life. The rest of us are heading for trouble. Then we see that Jesus' birth is the reason for our inspiration, motivation and stimulation. You see, too often we allow our spiritual life to become weak and lethargic. And in today's society that is very easy to do. It's very easy to get up in the morning and say, oh, I've got so much on today that I won't bother about my um, daily devotional reading. Or whatever. Oh, God knows I'm busy. He'll accept this quick prayer. It's so easy to take that attitude. But we need Jesus to inspire and to encourage us. For we read that all scripture is given by God and is useful for teaching, for showing people what is wrong in their lives, for correcting faults and for teaching how to live right. Am I getting into the scriptures so that I know what is wrong in my life and so that God can help me to put it right? Friends, as we learn of Jesus Christ and grow in him, he lifts us up to seek God's ways. He changes our priorities as we begin to see through the Creator's eyes. Then we come to sanctification. That is purification. He purifies us and makes us whole before God. That's the only way we can stand before God as a whole person. Paul challenges us to be sanctified in Christ Jesus and called to be holy together with all those everywhere who call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are called to lead a life that is devoted to God and be purified for his purposes and for his ways. John also wrote, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his, sorry, his son, purifies us from all sin. Do you want to be pure? The only way is through Jesus Christ. Because his birth is the reason for our transformation. That's a big word. But it means to change or make over our life into something new. And there are two areas in that. There's the future. Our homeland is in heaven and we are waiting for our Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ, to come from heaven. By his power to rule all things, he will change our simple bodies and make them like his own glorious body. But that's to come 
That's the future. What of now? We are warned. Do not change yourselves to be like the people of this world, but be changed within by a new way of thinking. Then you will be able to decide what God wants for you. You will know what is good and pleasing to him and what is perfect. What a challenge. Do not be changed. Do not change yourself to be like the people of this world. Wow. Not easy though, is it? We don't want to be different. We want to be part of this world. <coughs> but don't, we are told. But be changed within. Let God change us. We are to be transformed with a new mind given by the Lord himself. And that transformation is a spiritual one. It requires us to trust God. And that in turn will transform our whole life and our perception of things. Jesus' birth is also the reason for our joy. Seems that many of most of it, most people, in fact, are chasing after happiness and joy. But so many are chasing in the wrong direction. Jesus Christ can bring those into our life, and He is the only one that can give true joy, that can give true satisfaction. Now we rejoice in our wonderful new relationship with God, all because of what our Lord Jesus Christ has done in dying for our sins, making us friends of God. Think about that for a moment. Friends of God. And if we are friends of God, we can truly rejoice because Christ has reconciled us to God. He has brought us back into a relationship, a very personal relationship with the living God. We can speak with him. We can know him as a true and loving father because of what Jesus has done. And Jesus' birth is the reason for our equanimity or calmness under stress. You see, some people never seem to get upset. They have an attitude that it will be all okay. Our eldest son would seem to be like that. Don't worry, Mum. It'll be all right. Even as he was growing up. But we often envy those who are not faced by crises and events that are out of their control. But you know, the reason for Christmas offers us peace of mind in difficult situations. It offers us that purpose to know that God is in control and therefore we do not need to worry. Freedom, it offers us freedom from overpowering fear. Jesus himself said, Don't be afraid of people who can kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. The only one you should fear is the one who can destroy the soul and the body in hell. Paul was convinced because he said, For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, neither angels, nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Wow! Are we persuaded that much? Paul was convinced, and we can be a certain but as well when we have Jesus Christ in our life. 
and on our side. For his birth is the reason for our serenity. Most people call this peace. No matter where you go in this world, the majority of people are reaching out and searching for peace. Sadly, almost everyone is looking in the wrong direction, in the wrong place, to know true peace. Because true peace is much more than freedom from war. It is freedom from internal, personal conflict and an acceptance of the situation. It is serenity. The psalmist wrote, He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. Wow, what a peaceful scene. Think about it for a moment. Green pastures, quiet waters, very peaceful. What could be less restful than the picture painted by the sailors? Everything in its right place and performing its correct task. Then we see that Jesus' birth is the reason for our usefulness for God. By this I mean we become of great value and worth to God when we are obedient to Him. Because God created us for a purpose. But we only become useful and fulfil that purpose by accepting His gift and then allowing Him to have control of our life. We read, God put everything under Christ's power and made Him the head over everything for the church which is Christ's body. The church is filled with Christ and Christ fills everything in every way. You see, when we accept Christ, then we become useful to God. Again, we read, all who cleanse themselves will become special utensils, dedicated and useful to the owner of the house, ready for every good work. Jesus' birth is the reason for our salvation. Friends, that is the greatest gift of all, our salvation. Yet we find it very hard to accept that gift. We want to be doing something. We want to prove ourselves. But God says, no. Come and allow me to work in your life. It is hard to accept because it is a gift from God. Whereas we want to earn our way into heaven. It is hard to accept because we don't believe that God could love us that much. Because we look at our life. Paul wrote to Timothy, I patiently accept all these troubles so that those whom God has chosen can have the salvation that is in Christ Jesus. With that salvation comes glory that never ends. Friends, we can have salvation from the penalty of our, for our sin. We can have salvation from the meaninglessness and useful, useless life. Salvation from the fear of failure and death. But that salvation is found only in Christ Jesus because he died on Calvary as a living sacrifice for each one of us. Friends, let me remind you that Jesus' birth is the reason for the Christian's life. When we ignore this, we lose some of the areas we have been considering. The remarkable and unbelievable thing is that Christ is God's Son and He's also God, the one and only. That is, God, God gave Himself to humanity. It's a gift. Have you accepted it yet? 
If you, if not, I urge you to think about it and pray about it over this period as we come into the period that we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. Let me pray. Father, we ask that you will indeed speak to our hearts and show us the way that you would have us to respond. Father, we pray that you will guide us into the direction that you would have for our lives. Help us, we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen.